एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर द न्यू यू जी सी सी बी सी एस करिकुलम एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री डिफिकल्ट साइंस कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम एवर वॉन्डर्ड वॉट आर दोज एडवर्टीजमेंट्स क्लेमिंग अबाउट एल्फा हाइड्रोक्सी एसिड्स एंड एंटी एजिंग प्रोडक्ट्स दे ऑल हैव इन कॉमन ऑल दोज एड्स क्लेम we have aha aha if these fruits have aha so in today's video we will find out what are these aha's alpha hydroxy acids hello everyone my name is dr manika and you are watching s chand academy we are taking the topic aldehydes and ketones as continued with our previous videos and to get more about this topic please refer to our book by s chand publishing the link to which is given in the description box below let's start with the properties of carbonyl compounds as we discussed in our previous lecture that carbonyl compounds are the compounds containing an electropositive carbon which is linked to an electronegative oxygen atom via a pi bond it is this pi bond which has the polar group which has a polarity in it and this polarity gives rise to most of the properties of these compounds so polarization in the carbonyl group is an important thing which we have to take into account to explain all their physical and chemical properties so let's look at some of the physical properties of these compounds first and then we will come to their chemical behavior as we look at the carbonyl group you can see it's a polar group the polarity is towards the oxygen there is a net dipole moment in this particular bond it is this polarization which gives aldehydes and ketones higher boiling points as compared to their counterpart alkenes and if you compare the boiling points of carbonyl compounds with the alcohols what do you expect will it be higher or lower alcohols have hydrogen atom directly attached to the oxygen and because of this oh group they can undergo hydrogen bonding carbonyl groups however do not carbonyl compounds like aldehydes and ketones however do not have such hydrogen atom so they cannot undergo hydrogen bonding amongst themselves so because of this their boiling point are lower as compared to the alcohols but higher as compared to the alkenes so ye to ho gayi boiling point ki baat now let's come to the solubility factor and since i just said that carbonyl groups have polar carbonyl group ka po polarity in them and is polarity ki wajah se they have dipole dipole interactions so they can interact they can even undergo dipole dipole interactions with the alcohols and other polar molecules also is wajah se they are soluble in alcohols the lower members of the family like methanol ethanol are able to solubilize acetone as well as uh, methanol okay so these can solubilize alcohols also so they are soluble in it so because of this they have quite varying solubility behavior so due to this hydrogen bonding between the carbonyl compounds and alcohols carbonyl compounds are soluble in alcohols not all of them the lower member the lower members are practically soluble in water even formalin you must have seen biological specimens in the laboratories uh, stored in a solution how do they stay long for so many years this is because they are stored in a solution of formaldehyde which is called as formalin formalin kya hota hai 40% aqueous solution of formaldehyde ko hum kehte hain formalin it is used to store such specimens it is also a solvent in the laboratory and it's also a good reagent also let's look at the reactivity of carbonyl group now now carbonyl group because it is polar it gives rise to two basic sets of the reactions unme se ek set of reactions hum abhi discuss karenge but the other one we will take up in the other lecture so the first one is the nucleophilic addition reactions on the carbonyl compounds ab ye nucleophilic reactions ka both hai nucleophilic reactions ke liye so hume do cheeze chahiye hoti hain we need an electrophile we need a nucleophile ab electrophile hamara center jo hai carbon hai why because carbon has got a positive charge on it partial positive charge so it is susceptible to nucleophilic attack so nucleophile aapka carbon pe attack kar sakta hai because polarity jo hai hamare bond ki towards oxygen hai is nucleophilic addition ko aur faster banane ke liye hum kabhi kabhi acid catalysts bhi use karte hain so what do these acid catalysts do these acid catalysts they protonate the oxygen
and this protonation then again aids the attack of nucleophile on the carbon atom without oxygen going to have a negative charge. So acids can act as good catalyst for nucleophilic addition reaction. Let's start with the basic nucleophilic addition of aldehydes and ketones. And the first one in this category is addition of HCN. Addition of HCN molecule onto the carbonyl compounds gives rise to versatile compounds known as cyanohydrins. Now, cyanohydrins kya hoti? Cyanohydrins form hoti hain jab hum kisi bhi carbonyl compound ko react karte hain HCN se in the presence of KCN. So they give you alpha hydroxy nitriles. These alpha hydroxy nitriles are also known as cyanohydrins. These are formed when CN minus act as the nucleophile on to the electrophilic carbon center. These cyanohydrins are important as far as the organic synthesis is concerned because the product of this reaction, you can see here cyanide when it attacks to the carbonyl carbon and then the intermediate easily extracts a proton from the HCN and the product is cyanohydrin and the leaving group cyanide. Cyanide CN minus is a good leaving group. So cyanide is a strong base and it's, it's a strong nucleophile as well. So the mechanism of this reaction is base catalyzed nucleophilic addition. So sodium cyanide or KCN, ye dono hi hum is reaction mein catalyst ke form mein use kar sakte hain. This reaction is Cyanohydrin formation is reversible reaction. Is reversibility ki wajay se depend karta hai ki which will be the major product, your carbonyl or the cyanohydrin. And this depends upon the carbonyl compound, the reactant. The more is the substituted carbonyl compound, the lower will be the rate of the reaction or the equilibrium will shift towards the carbonyl compound. So hindered ketones jo honge, they will not give you the cyanohydrin in the as the product. So they will more, the equilibrium will shift more towards the left giving back the carbonyl compound. So this reaction is inhibited by the presence of bulky groups on the carbonyl carbon. So cyanohydrins as I just said are important compounds because because of their commercial importance. Kyu hai wo? Aap, if you look at the structure, say for example, agar hum benzaldehyde ka cyanohydrin dekhe, so this is the cyanohydrin which is formed and if you just hydrolyze it, the product is an alpha hydroxy acid, alpha hydroxy acids, also pronounced, uh, abbreviated as AHA. Are important, are very important industrial compounds. They are used in anti-aging compounds, uh, citrus peels ka component hote hain, AHAs and they are quite common. They are, they have, they are the richest source of uh, antioxidants also. So hydrolysis products of cyanohydrins are of commercial importance. And I just said that this is a very important nucleophilic addition reaction of aldehydes and ketones. Now let's move to the second reaction, the other reaction, nucleophilic addition of aldehydes and ketones, which is the formation of uh, acetals. Acetals are basically diethers of aldehydes and ketones. Ab diethers ka matlab kya hai? Jo dono ether molecules aapke aayenge alcohols. Al acetals bante kaise hai? Acetals bante hai jab koi bhi carbonyl compound react karta hai two moles of alcohol ke saath in the presence of an acid catalyst the products are acetals. Acetals are geminal diethers. Isko yaad karne ka tariqa kya hai? Jab bhi aap koi aldehyde react karte hai alcohol say two moles of alcohol basically the products are geminal diethers geminal diethers matlab dono aapke ether ke jo groups hain they will be attached to the same carbon atoms okay. and hence the name gemina, geminal diether one equivalent of alcohol first gives hemiacetal and the second mole of alcohol will add to the hemiacetal to give the corresponding acetal. These reactions are acid catalyzed. The formation of acetals is 
acid catalyzed so there are two basic steps in the mechanism of this reaction the first step jab aapka acid jo hai carbonyl oxygen ko protonate karta hai it is this protonation which aids the attack of the first alcohol molecule so once the first alcohol molecule adds to the carbonyl carbon the hemiacetal is formed and the second part of the mechanistic pathway involves acid catalyzed dehydration of the water molecule ye dehydration of water molecule will also be acidic and once this water molecule has been removed your acetal will be formed so this reaction just like the cyanohydrin formation is also reversible and to drive the reaction towards the right we must remove the water as and when it is getting formed in the reaction by distillation methods otherwise you will not get the acetal you will again get back the the uh, carbonyl compound so this method the acetal formation hum karte kyu hai because acetals are very good uh, compounds to be used as a protecting group for the carbonyl compounds they are versatile protecting groups for protecting any sort of carbonyl compound in any organic synthesis we are doing for example why i'm saying protecting group because once you synthesize the ac acetal you can just hydrolyze them again with the dilute acid and, and the water to give back the carbonyl compound there are cyclic acetals also which can be easily synthesized say for example we have uh, acetaldehyde and you can react it with say ethylene glycol under the presence of an acid so the product will be ch3 ch a cyclic acetal okay and the ketones will also give acetal but the common name for the acetals obtained from the ketones are ketals okay instead of ethylene glycol one can also used such diethyl if you use this diethyl and react with the formaldehyde the product will be a uh diethylene the ones which we which we have already used for the synthesis of carbonyl compounds so acetal synthesis is another important method to synthesize as uh, to uh, synthesize diethers or it's an example of nucleophilic addition on carbonyl compounds with these two examples of nucleophilic additions i think we have built up enough base to move further nucleophilic addition reactions before we proceed further i will i would like to give a break and let's uh, test whatever we have started by a small question what will be the product if you react say ethanol with a reagent which has both the thiol and an alcoholic group keep thinking and we'll get back to the question with the answer हाय मैं हूं नेहा शर्मा और मैं आ रही हूं एस चांद एकेडमी में आपके फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री के डिफिकल्ट कंसेप्ट्स को इजी बनाने सो so प्लीज़ हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करिए ताकि आप अपनी सारी फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री की प्रॉब्लम्स को भूल जाएं और सबके सॉल्यूशंस आपको मिल जाएं हाय वेलकम बैक टू दस चांद अकेडमी आई होप यू आर लाइकिंग द डिस्कशन ओवर हियर एंड गेटिंग बैक टू दी आंसर the re the product of which you will get with such a kind of a molecule it's not difficult just as i said uh, our carbonyl compounds can react with alcohols or thiols to give you geminal diether so if you use such a kind of a molecule then with any sort of say aldehyde it will give you the corresponding cyclic compound so these are quite easy relatively easy now let's move on to the next nucleophilic addition which is the addition of ammonia derivatives whenever we talk of these set of reactions there are many variety of reagents there are variety of reagents which we take into our discussion when we think of ammonia derivatives starting with the amine simple amine simple simplest amines are any alkyl group or aryl group attached to the nh2 group so when any carbonyl compound reacts with a primary amine say r nh2 the product r
imines these are the imines right so if we have any primary amine and the r group can be any we can get a variety of imines let's look at the table over here so if 1 degree amine adds to a carbonyl compound the product is simply amine if the reagent is a hydroxyl amine the product will be an oxine if the reagent is semi carboxyl the product will be a semi carboxone if the reagent is hydrazine the product will be hydrazone and for hydroxyl amine you will get the corresponding oxine so these are the various type of the reagents and the various type of the corresponding amines which are formed in almost in all these reactions uh, before i uh, move further with this discussion let me mention a peculiar thing about uh, these amine derivatives why do we synthesize them so if you look at the reaction of carbonyl compound with hydrazine the product is hydrazone this particular reagent is usually encountered in chemical laboratories when we do the test of carbonyl compounds so the first test hum karte hain carbonyl compounds ke detection ke liye kisi bhi organic compound mein we do we, we do 2,4 dnp test 2,4 dnp kya hota hai 2,4 dnp is 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazine this is 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazine so this is simply your amine with where the r group is this and when you react it with the carbonyl compound the product will be 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazone these compounds are orange to red colored crystalline solids inko crystalline karne ke baad you get very stable orange to red colored uh, uh, 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazones which can be used as a method to detect the presence of carbonyl compound not only their presence they can be used as suitable derivatives to analyze an unknown organic compound similarly the next reaction aap yahan dekh rahe hain which is the formation of semi carbazone this is also an important method to form the derivative of any unknown carbonyl compound semi carbazone is are usually synthesized by easily available reagent in the laboratory which is semi carbazite hydrochloride almost all the ammonia derivatives are synthesized in the presence of acids so what does the acid do acid basically protonates the oxygen and then the nucleophile which is your amine can easily attack the carbonyl carbon and because of this easy attack carbonyl amine is formed and once this carbonyl amine is formed it will undergo dehydration to give the corresponding amine product these reactions since they are catalyzed by acids they have a specific ph at which they work upon is reaction ka jo rate hai ph ke sath vary karta hai right 0 1 2 so this follows a maxima and then it decreases so this highest point is around 4.5 now why this happens if this reaction is acid catalyzed so ph hamara jaise hi maxima jata hai after a particular while why the rate of the reaction is decreasing this is because jab acid ki concentration becomes beyond a point then what happens then amines get protonated to ammonium salts which is no longer nucleophilic nitrogen pe lone pair of electrons hi nahi hai it can no longer give you the corresponding it can no longer participate in the nucleophilic attack so we have to maintain a certain particular ph so that the rate of the reaction is accelerated and amine is also not protonated in such a way that you lose the nucleophilic attack the amine formation of amines is also reversible and these derivatives can also act as important protective group so once you synthesize the amine you can separate them and hydrolyze them back to give you the corresponding carbonyl compound and due to their aerial oxidation easy aerial oxidation jo bhi amine hum use karte hain lab mein it is usually stored in the form of their salts otherwise they undergo aerial oxidation so whenever we want to isolate any amine from its salt we have to use a base such as sodium acetate to isolate it first from the salt and then we use it to carry out our nucleophilic addition reaction one such more type of nucleophilic addition is addition of sodium metabisulfite which is nahso3 the importance of these products ye bahut simple reaction hai nahso3 ke sath 
this is a very simple reaction the products of this reactions are bisulfite compounds and hum bisulfite adducts bhi bolte hain inke jo products hote hain they are white crystalline solids and the property the, the good thing about these compounds is in these products is that they are insoluble in the aldehyde solution so once they are formed you can filter them out ओके एंड वंस यू फिल्टर देम आउट यू कैन हाइड्रोलाइज देम हाइड्रोलाइज करके एसिड से अगर आप हाइड्रोलाइज करेंगे तो SO2 टू इवॉल्व होगा एसिड से अगर आप हाइड्रोलाइज करेंगे देन सपोज द प्रोडक्ट इज राइट इफ यू हाइड्रोलाइज देम विद द एसिड SO2 will be evolved and if you hydrolyze with a base sodium sulfide along with these aldehyde will be separated ab is aldehyde ko aap ether se extract karke you can get the pure aldehyde so the solid extracts solid adducts can be extracted another important reaction in this category is wittig reaction wittig reagents kya hote hain wittig reaction hoti hai sabse pehle addition of phosphorus elides or alkylidene phosphoranes to a carbonyl compound is called wittig reaction named after obviously after the scientist so ye alkylidene phosphorane ya wittig reagents hote kya hain these are triphenyl phosphine derivatives of alkyl halides basically formed by reacting alkyl halide ko triphenyl phosphine se react karte hain treated with the base and it gives you the corresponding phosphorus elide right so whenever we react an aldehyde with a phosphorus elide the product is an alkene and the by product is triphenyl phosphine oxide okay these reagents are important for the synthesis of branched alkenes or complex alkenes which are otherwise difficult to synthesize by the usual methods ye aapka ketone ya aldehyde hai you can react with say this is the elide we are using and the alkene formed will be this along with triphenyl phosphine oxide right so wittig reagents are important reagents in the chemistry to synthesize alkenes mechanism is reaction ka bahut hi simple hota hai it's just that you have to remember one thing that there is a formation of a cyclic intermediate in this reaction and wo bhi and what is the importance of this cyclic intermediate that they have an unusual structure let's look at it how whenever a carbonyl compounds react with an elide the first intermediate which we get is a betaine betaine has an unusual structure where there is a positive charge on phosphorus and negative charge on oxygen this is just an intermediate the betaine this betaine is readily converted into oxophosphatein which is a four membered cyclic ring compound and which is again dissociated to give you the corresponding alkene wittig reagent is as i just said in the beginning can be synthesized by reacting triphenyl phosphine with the alkyl halide so jo aapka triphenyl phosphonium alkyl salt banega that is further reacted with a base which abstracts the alpha hydrogen uh, hydrogen from the alkyl group which is directly attached to the phosphorus atom and the product is elide and these elides can be directly used to react with the alkene so jab bhi koi wittig synthesis hum plan karte hain let's i am just ending up this discussion with a question say for example we want to synthesize any alkene using a wittig reagent we need to dissect the molecule at the double bond place say this is the alkene which we want to synthesize so we'll break the molecule at the double bond and do a retro synthesis retro is inverse of synthesis so aldehyde hamara ho jayega cho and what will be the alkyl halide we will take ch3x so this will be the alkyl halide which will give you the elide and the corresponding benzaldehyde ke sath you can react the corresponding elide to give you the product i hope you like the video over here to get through more such videos 
please log into our channel by S. Chand Academy. And for more info on this topic, refer to our book by S. Chand Publishing. And before leaving, please press the like, share and subscribe button and press the bell icon for more such videos. Thank you so much.